What's going on everybody? Today I'm going to go over how to install Windows 11 from start to finish. A lot of people are dissing it, but from my own experiences I'm pretty happy with it. So let's go ahead and get started going over a few things here. So first things first, we're actually going to go ahead and dabble on the machine that I installed Windows 10 on in my previous video. A few things to note here. So if you've got a working machine with Windows 10 and it already meets all the hardware requirements, then you may notice that you're, you'll either have this down the bottom right hand corner where it mentions Windows 11 version 22H2 or whichever build is available at the time that you're looking at this. It's ready for your PC. And so you click this, you can install it. You could also go to start, settings, update and security. And then you'd have this banner at the top here and you could do download and install or you can stay on Windows 10 for now and you won't see this banner, or at least this banner won't be up here. I believe it hides down here once you, once you click that button. So the thing that I recommend is not doing an in-place upgrade from Windows 10 to 11. From, the, from past experiences with any sort of Windows upgrade, whether it was from Windows XP to Vista, Vista to 7, 7 to 8, 8 to 10, there's just weird oddities that can happen and it's not always a clean process. So I strongly recommend if you're making the jump from say Windows 10 to 11, that you're gonna go ahead and just nuke the machine's OS and start from scratch. It's really the best way I recommend of not having any issues going forward. So anyhow, we're gonna go ahead and close out of that. And so I want to go ahead and go over the hardware requirements, which things are pretty complicated with Windows 11 if you have a relatively older machine. So even though this page mentions all this stuff here, so for instance, processor one gigahertz or faster with two or more cores on a compatible 64-bit processor, I recommend you click on this and go through and look up your processor there. Um, TPM, so you need to have the trusted platform module, which is a security chip on your computer's motherboard or mainboard, it has to be version 2.0, and it's not always enabled by default, so that's another thing that you may have to dig into. Graphics card compatible with DirectX 12 or later with WDDM 2.0 driver. Um, Pretty basic for the display resolution. Uh, internet connection is required in order to uh, install Windows 11. And I'll be actually showing some tips in that section. Need to have a UEFI based BIOS with secure boot capability, 64 gigabytes or larger of storage, aka hard drive space. Now I recommend at least a 120 drive, 120 gigabyte drive at this point. 64 gigabytes is going to give you practically nothing for free space for applications and stuff like that. It mentions four gigabytes of RAM as the minimum. I recommend at least eight gigs. My new standard kind of moving forward though is having 16 gigs of RAM in a machine. Um, you know, using any of the new age browsers like, you know, Edge or Chrome or, or any of the options. All of them suck up a huge amount of memory, even just, you know, a system that's for web browsing. So 60, 16 gigs gives you some good uh, buffer there. So anyhow, as I said, things are pretty complicated here. Uh, the best thing that I actually recommend you do is go up to, I'll actually send a, a link for this. So we're going to go up here. And so there's the PC Health Check app, which is from Microsoft. And if we go ahead and download this and run it, just accept the terms and install, and then we'll go ahead and open it. And so basically it's going to go over a few things here. Um, but what we're going to go ahead and utilize this for is Introducing Windows 11. Let's check if the PC meets the system requirements. If it does, so we'll do check now. 
And so in this case, it already states this PC meets Windows 11 requirements. And you can click on See Results, and it will show you everything that matches up. If it, if it says that your PC is not compatible with Windows 11, you can still click See Results, and it will show you exactly the areas that it's angry about. Um, and like I said, the, the big one here is probably going to be TPM, um, not either being built into the main board or motherboard of your computer, or it is, but it's not enabled. And so the best thing to do is if you see this here, I believe what will happen is it'll say TPM 2.0 disabled, it may state here. If it mentions that, look up the exact model of your computer or exact model of your motherboard if you built the machine and figure out the steps needed to enable that. And then just go ahead and run the same thing and verify that this is happy. So just wanted to show that things, like I said, things are a little more complicated with Windows 11. One thing to mention is that you could actually install Windows 11 on a machine that doesn't meet those um, requirements. You can go ahead and use a utility called Rufus, which I do recommend the, the, the utility. However, the problem with it is that Microsoft could enable some sort of patch that could break your, your computer if you use Rufus's bypass capabilities of basically saying, don't worry about TPM, don't worry about memory requirements, or don't worry about secure boot requirements. So, so I just recommend if you're jumping to Windows 11, just, just make sure that everything's just going to be happy with it. Don't use the bypass. So anyhow, one thing I do want to go over is that, so we are going to go ahead and use the Windows Media Creation Tool, which is from Microsoft. Now, it recommends an 8 gigabyte thumb drive. I recommend at least a 16 gigabyte thumb drive, especially a thumb drive that's at least USB 3.0 for the speed. You could use a 2.0 drive, but it's going to take a long time to make the installation media and then also just to install Windows from it. And with how inexpensive USB 3.0 or, or greater drives are, it's just so much easier just to go that route. So, and I will go ahead and include in my description below a uh, recommended, just pretty generic thumb drive that will get the job done. And if you have a machine that only has USB-C on it, I will also include a USB-A, aka old school style USB um, port to the USB-C style, which just converts it. So anyhow, the reason as to why I recommend the larger drive is because I like to, if possible, if you've got another working machine or the machine that you're going to nuke is working enough to where you can go ahead and pre-download the drivers for the computer. If you don't know what the drivers are, so the drivers are the software that help the operating system communicate to basically the hardware of the machine, and it's optimized to make things faster, act better, all that good stuff. So just to kind of give you a reference in case you've never downloaded drivers before, so let's pretend as though you have a Lenovo machine. So we can go to Lenovo.com. And you'll go to Support. And you could go to PC, View PC Support. And then you can type in the, the model here, hit Search and it will bring you to that model support page and you can download the drivers. Uh, just another instance, let's say you had an HP, go to hp.com, you go to, click on this stuff here, support, software and drivers, select if it's a laptop or a desktop, and then you would type in the serial number down here, hit submit, and it's gonna bring you to that support page. Now, of course, I'm not going to go over every single model, make and model that's out there, but obviously just Google search um, your make and model, and that should lead you to the right spot. I recommend only downloading the drivers from the actual manufacturer's website. The only drivers that 
I would recommend going directly to for things are like if you have a dedicated graphics card, like an NVIDIA card, an AMD card, or also with Intel being back in the graphics game, the Intel graphics card websites. And I strongly recommend you stay on top of updating those drivers every one to two months, especially if a new game comes out. You're especially going to want to go ahead and download the latest drivers because they're probably tweaked for the, the new game that came out and get, gets rid of all sorts of bugs and stuff like that. There are also security vulnerabilities that happen in graphic drivers a lot these days. So it's good to stay on top of driver updates, even just to patch that nonsense out. So anyhow, I already downloaded the drivers for my machine. And I'm just going to go over some things real quick here. So I've got these folders here and I've got numbers on them. And the numbers state which ones I install in which order. So number one being chipset. So chipset drivers are pretty important very early on. Also, it helps um, the driver sense which hardware is there once the chipset driver is there. So I've got first chipset, second is storage, third is network, and that's hardwired network, aka Ethernet. Wireless driver, if the machine has it. This one doesn't, but I just have it here just to show. Fifth one would be the graphics driver, and the sixth one is the audio driver. So anyhow, this is just kind of my go-to sequence of installing it. Once we have the the win, the um, new Windows 11 installed on here, so let's go ahead and go over getting the installation media all set up. I've already got a 32 gigabyte thumb drive plugged into my machine. So we're going to go to Edge, or whichever browser you like. And we'll do Windows 11 Media Creation Tool. I'll just use the autocomplete here. And so this is directly from Microsoft. Like I said, you could certainly use Rufus. Um, however, I've run into some issues recently with compatibility between what Rufus uses for its, um, its boot uh, injector over what Microsoft has, and it seems to be a weird thing going on with if you've got a Microsoft Surface tablet, then you definitely want to use the media creation tool. So we'll go ahead and click this here, download Windows 11. And we'll scroll down here. All right, so we'll go ahead and click on this right here, download now. Go ahead and open it. Yes for this. Go ahead and close out of everything else. So the machine is just focusing on this. We'll accept. All right, so I recommend just leaving the use the recommended options for this PC. If you uncheck this, this doesn't even give you any options here beside the language. So we'll just leave that checked. Hit next. We're going to go ahead and do the USB flash drive option. So if you are using Rufus, you could go ahead and just check the ISO file um, on that same exact website. Though, if you scroll down just a little bit more, you could also just download the ISO file and um, have Rufus go ahead and build it up from there. So anyhow, USB flash drive selected. Here's my thumb drive. So that's fine. If this doesn't, if it doesn't show up here, uh, make sure that it's in, it's inserted all the way. Or as the worst, unplug it, give it a few seconds, plug it back in, hit refresh drive list, and hopefully it'll show up for you here. Hit next. And this is going to take a little bit. All right, so it is done. So we'll hit finish. And then the key thing is, is that I will go ahead and copy my drivers over to it here. Now, copying the drivers into this is not going to slipstream them into the Windows installer. We're merely using this as a vehicle to have available to us once the operating system is installed to just start installing the drivers. So, all right, now that that is done, so obviously at this point we haven't actually done anything to the computer itself. Now, 
this is your chance to basically back up any of the data that you need before we go ahead and nuke it all. So do that before progressing on here. So really the most difficult things that I can think of of actually installing an operating system is just trying to get the machine to actually boot from the thumb drive. Now every manufacturer is different. A lot of times when your computer boots, well, depending on the manufacturer, at that very first screen you would see, which is called the post screen, um, it'll show like the manufacturer's name or the model of the machine or whatnot. Sometimes on the bottom or the top, you'll notice it'll say press some, uh, some key to do a certain function. Um, so you could see one that maybe mentions boot order and you could press whatever the key is that it mentions for that. Like I said, every manufacturer is different. Some manufacturers, it's F2, sometimes it's F9, F10, F12. Could be the delete key, could be you mash the enter key until eventually a special screen comes up. If you've got a Microsoft Surface tablet, you have to do a certain button sequence, and a lot of times it's you have to hold the volume down button down while also pressing the power button, but you keep holding the volume button down until it eventually pops up or just loads the thumb drive. So I always recommend if you don't know what button is required to boot a thumb drive or other external or other device, um, just go ahead and Google your manufacturer, you know, your make and model uh, of, the, of the computer or motherboard and down the proper path. If all else fails, there is the alternative option, which works 50% of the time, and I'll go ahead and show it now. So if we go down to Start, Settings, Update and Security, Recovery, Advanced Startup. So as it states, start up a device or disk, such as a USB drive or DVD, and so we'll go ahead and click restart now just to show you. So you'll get this special little page here. So you can click on use a device. And then what you would look for is um, something that says like generic USB device. It may state the actual thumb drive's manufacturer on it. It could also say USB HDD aka USB hard disk drive, and you could click that as well as potentially getting it to boot. Um, I already know what it will take to get this machine to boot, so I'm just going to go ahead and click continue here so that it'll just reboot the machine. And since this is a Lenovo machine, at least this Lenovo machine, it's F12, so I'm just continuously mashing the F12 key here. And then I'm just going to go ahead and arrow down to this here, which is my thumb drive, a very generic branded thumb drive. And I can tell it's already trying to boot from it because of that little twirly icon there is the Windows 11 icon. So here we are in the Windows 11 installation setup. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this all as is, but obviously you would change your language and time and currency formats here and the keyboard inputs will hit next. I'm going to click install now. And one thing I just want to mention, I'm going to go ahead and accept this here and I'll, and I'll click next. But before I hit next, so in a lot of modern machines, if it's a pre-built machine, the CD key for the operating system is in the BIOS. And so if this is a machine that you just built yourself, it's not going to have a key in the BIOS, and you'll get a page that'll pop up that'll mention which version of Windows 11 do you want to install. So this is kind of the key area where you need to make sure to select the right version of Windows 11 based on the key that you have. If you don't, you're going to have to redo the entire Windows 11 installation to the proper version of Windows 11 that that key is. And one thing to also mention, at least at this time, you can still use a Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1, or Windows 10 or 11 key to activate Windows 11 right now. 
I personally recommend a Windows Professional key. So Windows 7 Professional, Windows 8 Professional, Windows 10 Professional, Windows 11 Professional, just so that it gives you a few extra features. So we'll go ahead and hit next here. And so, like I said, that page didn't pop up because this machine has the key in the BIOS. So the installation setup here sniffed it out and it already knows which version it's going to install, which is Windows 11 Professional. We will go ahead and click on custom. And so this is the area where it goes and shows every single one of your hard drives. Now, the very first drive is actually drive zero and you're gonna see multiple partitions and that's just because Windows 10 and 11 like to create special little partitions on the drive for recovery capabilities and, and system optimization and whatnot. If you have multiple drives, then you would see you would see drive zero, then you'd see drive one, drive two, and and so on. And this is the area where I recommend just outright deleting all of the partitions for all the drives. So what I'm gonna do here. I want to go ahead and hit delete for every single one of these. And one thing to mention is that if you don't see any drives in here, or you only see some of your drives, if you had multiple hard drives, then it's most likely because Windows 11 does not have a driver built into the setup installer that understands what your drives are. And so if you don't see the, any drives or you're missing a drive or something, you can go down here to do load driver. And what you would need to do is you would have to get the driver on the thumb drive and potentially extracted so that the installation installer actually understands the drive. And then so you click load drive, you can go in and then kind of search for the driver that's needed, select it, and then it will should automatically refresh the page or you just hit refresh and then your drive should hopefully show up here. So anyhow, I went ahead and deleted all the partitions. So we have just one single allocated space here. If you had multiple drives, you would see drive one allocate unallocated space, drive two unallocated space and so on. So anyhow, we're going to go ahead and just go ahead and hit new and apply because this is the opportunity to where you could create other partitions, but I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this as one solid drive here. It's gonna warn us, okay. And then like I said, it Windows will create some special partitions here just for operating system um, optimizations. So we'll go ahead and hit next. And we'll let it crunch along here. It's gonna go ahead and restart here. You could click the restart now button, but I'll just go ahead and let it do its thing. And it's gonna start booting Windows 11 on the actual computer now. And it's gonna go through some basic driver loading and stuff like that. All right, at this point, the machine may have rebooted once or twice. And so now we just wait for the setup screen to continue here. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this as is. So we'll hit yes. Obviously, you would select whatever country you're in. Keyboard layout, yes. Skip this. It's going to check for mandatory updates. It may install updates and then reboot as well if something is very critical. So this here, you could go ahead and name the machine or you can go ahead and skip it for now. What we're going to go ahead and do is we are going to go ahead and name it. We're going to call it Hermits not as in the person who is secluded from society, but hermits as in the delicious cookies, which I will go ahead and link down below in the, in the description field. So anyhow, moving on, let's go ahead and hit next. All right, so the machine would have rebooted and now we are at the connection screen. If this had wireless, then it would give you the opportunity to go ahead and select the wireless network to connect up to as I had mentioned in the beginning where it had the um, system requirements or requirements for installing Windows 11 is that it has to connect to the internet in order to move forward. There used to be a means to bypass it in 
certain versions of Windows 10 and in the older version of Windows 11, but they have really locked it down now. So we're going to go ahead and hit next. All right. So you could either set it up for personal use or you can set it up for a work or school, such as if you've got a domain that you need to bind the machine to. We're just going to go ahead and set it up for personal use today. So we'll do that and hit next. And so this is another thing with Windows 11 now moving forward. No matter which version you actually have, it's going to force you to log into a Microsoft account. I'm going to go ahead and show you actually a little neat trick here to get it to create a local account. And I recommend everyone actually creates a local account, even if you have a Microsoft account, just so that you have a means to potentially get into your machine if something goes wrong with the Microsoft account. So we're going to go ahead and click sign in and then it's going to go ahead and ask you to sign in. You used to be able to click on sign in options and you could go through a few hoops with professional and above versions to say use a local account with Windows 11 22 H2. That's no longer possible. So anyhow, this is the way that we get around it. So we're going to go ahead and type in no at thank you dot com. Hit next enter any random password. We'll just type in hermits for the delicious recipe below. And it's going to say, oops, something went wrong. Hit next. And then all of a sudden it throws you basically into being able to create a local account. So we're just going to go ahead and call this uh, user. It does still give you the option to use an online account if you wanted to at this point, but it would not create the local account. So click next. I'm not going to put a password in, but I strongly recommend that you do. But this is just for the sake of speeding up the video that I won't use a password. So for the setup section here, this is all, of course, up to you. But I like to keep the location setting on so that time zone stuff is maintained by the computer itself automatically. Find my device, I turn off. Diagnostic data, turn off. Inking and typing off, tailored experiences, turn that off. Advertising ID, turn it off. Now that one of the things is if you actually go through and read some of this stuff, even though we've turned it off, it only suppresses it a little bit. So we've just kind of decreased the amount of data and whatnot that Microsoft is receiving or tailored ads are trying to tailor towards you. So now it's gonna go ahead and create our profile. All right, so we are now loaded into the desktop here. One thing I'm going to do, or I should say a few things I'm going to do, is I'm actually going to go ahead and tweak the user interface here. Now, this is all completely optional, but this is one of the main reasons as to why a lot of people don't like Windows 11 and don't realize that you can you know, do these kinds of tweaks. So as you see if you haven't used windows 11 before by default it puts the start menu and your taskbar icons in the center almost like they're trying to mimic mac os now i'm an old school windows person and i like to have my start menu and everything down here in the left so if we go ahead and right click on the taskbar click taskbar settings I'll expand this out we're going to go ahead and scroll down to taskbar behaviors, taskbar alignment right here. By default, it's set to center. We will change it to left. Now all of a sudden it's starting to look like an old school version of Windows, AKA Windows 10. And then we will go ahead and close out of this. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna right click on the background here. We're gonna to go to personal, personalize and i'm just going to go ahead and select this one here which has the magical pringles uh background there but it also has the predefined uh dark mode and all that good stuff to it so it's just a little easier on the eyes so anyhow at this point th these are the only tweaks we're going to do at this point but i am going to go ahead and start the driver installation and so I'm just going to go ahead and copy this to the desktop. I recommend you copy the drivers to your desktop and don't run them from the thumb drive because 
well, A, it can be a little bit slower, and B, there can be weird things that happen. So just copy it locally first, and then kick it off from the local source. At this point also, now that everything's copied over from the thumb drive, you can go ahead and pull the thumb drive if you, if you want. So I'll go ahead and click into this. And then just as I stated before, I go down prioritization of the drivers here. So I'm going to go ahead and show you um, how to install drivers. And I'm just going to do just one of the one of the drivers here just to show you what it looks like in case you've never done this before. And then once I'm done, then I will just install all the drivers, but I will not include that in this video, but it gives you a general idea of what you need to do. So I'll do chipset. In this case, there's actually two uh, files here. And the reason for this is that this is the main chipset driver. And then because this is an Intel based machine, it has the Intel management engine driver that's needed to keep everything happy. So I'm just going to go ahead and install this one right now. And then I would install this one here. So anyhow, we'll go ahead and click on this. Yes, for this. I accept. Next, just install, next, install. Next, next, install. And finish and finish again if it has another box that pops up. So it's all pretty straightforward. It's really just be patient, let it let the drivers crunch. And uh, once all the drivers are installed, then I will come right back and we'll continue on. All right, so with the drivers all installed, we should be good to continue forward. One thing to mention is that if you haven't rebooted the computer after installing all the drivers, I do recommend you do that before we continue on. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the drivers folder just for now, toss it in there. So next we're going to go ahead and do a um, tweak to the power options. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to start, type in control or control panel, open this. I'm going to switch this down to large icons, maximize this. I'm going to go to power options. I do to change when the computer sleeps. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change this down to never. Now, if you had a laptop, you would actually see two uh, rows of settings here. One would be on battery. One would be while plugged in. What I'd recommend you do is if this is a laptop that you select, um, put the computer to sleep never for the plugged into power option that would be on the right. We'll go ahead and leave everything as is here now and hit save. And then one other thing that a lot of people miss is this feature up here. So let's do choose what the power buttons do. This guy right here, turn on fast startup recommended. I strongly recommend turning this off. This only puts the computer into a super deep sleep state when you actually do a uh, start power option and then do shut down. So when you think that you're shutting your computer down, you're actually putting it into a deep sleep state. So the downside to this is that it can hold on to corruptions and, and wacky things that can happen in the previous session that you were using the computer. So this here, I just like to turn it off. It was really built as a means to kind of help speed up computers that had mechanical hard drives. And since most of the world now is on solid states, um, it's really just not needed. Even if you had a mechanical hard drive, I would still say turn this off because the pros outweigh the cons for it. So anyhow, it's grayed out right now to, un to enable it. We just go ahead up, go up here and click this and we can go ahead and uncheck it. And then down in the bottom here, we just hit save changes. All right. So with that done, We'll move on to the next step, and that is forcing Windows updates to kick off on this machine, which is very important. So we'll go down to Start. We'll go to Settings. We'll go to Windows Update. And before I actually click Check for Updates, we're going to click on Advanced Options. And I like to turn Receive Updates for other Microsoft products on. 
and I like to do get me up to date at least for the very first round of updates. So what's going to happen is it will notify 15 minutes before the computer is going to reboot and it forces the machine to reboot on its own in a small time frame. We'll turn this on. I do go ahead and turn this on. And actually for the download updates over metered connections, I turn it on just so I definitely know the thing is actually updating and there's no nonsense happening that's suppressing it from pulling those updates. So we'll hit back here and then we'll go ahead and do check for updates. And depending on your network speed, and uh, computer hardware, it could take a moment for it to find the updates and pull them down. All right, so it is pulling the updates down. So at this point, I would recommend just go ahead and walk away from the computer, give it 30 to 45 minutes, um, and it should automatically reboot and install all those update all these updates um, with the settings that we went ahead and turned on. So yeah, go ahead and walk away, take a nap get some coffee, have some tea. Maybe you could even go ahead and bake those hermit cookies in the meantime. And then once they're done, come back, your machine should be all patched up. One thing I like to mention to people is if you see this pop-up happen, it says to restart now, but you still see something is actually installing here. I like to hold off and click OK, and then do restart now once it's actually complete. In this case, everything is complete. So I'll just click restart now. All right, so the first round of Windows updates are done. So what I like to do is I like to make sure that there aren't any more queued up as some could have been dependencies before we could actually snag the latest and greatest. So if we're gonna just rinse and repeat, so start, settings, Windows update, give it a moment here. In this case, there is another update. So let's go ahead and do download and install. All right, so let's do one more check for updates. And I'll click it one more time here just to make sure it actually is done. All right, so it is in fact done. So let's go ahead and close out of this and we'll move on to the next portion. So the unfortunate thing is that there's actually two areas where updates pull from. Um, so you've got the Windows updates that I just showed you. And then unfortunately there's the Microsoft Store which has apps pre-installed on the machine that also have to be patched. Now, some people will go through and they'll go ahead and uninstall a lot of the trash that comes pre-installed here. A lot of these things aren't actually installed. They're just pointers at the moment. If I were to click it, then it would go ahead and install it. For the sake of this video, I'm just gonna go ahead and click on Microsoft Store, maximize it. I'm just gonna show you the process for updating the Microsoft Store apps. So we're going to go down to the bottom left here and click on Library. And we'll wait for this to load and then we'll click on Get Updates. So here it is. It just went ahead and pulled in a whole bunch of stuff. So there is a lot of trash it's going to pull down, um, but there are key ones like the WebP image stuff, VP9 video extensions, and a few other things that are actually required to keep the operating system optimized and running healthy um, and allowing it to have the capabilities of viewing certain image types, video types, that kind of stuff. So we'll just let it go ahead and crunch here. All right, so let's go ahead and just kick it off one more time just to make sure everything is actually patched up. So we've got the check mark, which means that everything is all patched. So. Effectively, at this point, everything is all nice and patched up so we can move on to the next portion. So I'm going to go ahead and do a bunch of optional tweaking and, and whatnot, which you can do or just skip over this part of the video and, and see the next portion. But anyhow, I am going to go down to the bottom right here into the tr system tray and I'm going to go ahead and right click on OneDrive. And because I'm not actually going to use OneDrive, um, I'm going to go ahead and click settings. Settings again, uncheck this, hit OK. We're going to go ahead and open it up one more time and we're going to double click on the shield with the exclamation mark there. So we'll double click on that, resolve all the nonsense that it feels is a problem. 
So as I had mentioned, um, how you can install or you can create a local account at first, and then you can always log into the Microsoft account and let the Microsoft account basically take over the computer. So this is your opportunity here, which of course you can still skip this section and then go into your account settings and still log in. But this is just one area that you could go ahead and log in with the Microsoft account and be done with it. But anyhow, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and hit dismiss for this one. And the same goes for OneDrive. Close out of that. And so everything else there is okay. I'm actually going to stop Microsoft Teams from starting. And to do that, we'll just go ahead and go into Task Manager. And so you can either do Control, Delete, and select Task Manager, or you can right click in the taskbar down here to Task Manager. And then what we're going to do is we're going to find the startup app section right here. And so this is actually an area that you can utilize um, to kind of help maintain the health of the machine as you install stuff over time. You could periodically go in here and uh, verify the things that you want to start or not start when the computer um, loads up. Um, so anyhow, here is Teams here. So we'll select it. It's currently set to enabled and I'm going to disable it. So you can go through here and say, oh, I don't need this. Let's go ahead and disable it. Um, these things here all look like they should be enabled or disabled. So we'll leave that as is. So we'll close out of that. And you'll look down here, it's still there. It's not gonna take effect until we actually reboot the machine. So next up, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of a whole bunch of things here. So as for as far as like the search bar down here, the thing is, is that as you saw previously with me doing a search for like the control panel, is that the search feature is built in the start. So all you have to do is click start, you know, type in where you want to go, and there's your there's your search feature. So it's nonsense for it to, to be down there. So let's right click the taskbar taskbar settings and we're just going to go ahead and toggle off search i don't use task view so i'm toggling that off widgets toggle it off chat toggle it off again and once again this is all stuff that i personally do but if you want any of these on just leave them on and go from there so so we'll close out of that and then just the inner OCD of myself. I'm just going to drag that right there. All right. So one other thing actually we're going to do is we're going to add this PC to the desktop. You can add a few other set, uh, a few other desktop icons if you wanted to as well in the section I'm going to show you. So you right click on the desktop, go to personalize, and then we're going to click on themes. And then we go to desktop icon settings. And then we will click computer. And like I said, there's other things in here you could select. I'm just gonna hit apply, okay. And then we can close out of this. And my inner OCD again. I'm just gonna go ahead and move these around here. Empty the recycling bin here. Get rid of the drivers that aren't needed anymore. All right. All right, so next up, this is another optional thing, um, but we're going to go over edges, uh, custom settings that, we'll, that we can set. Now, a lot of people may not even use Edge. Edge has grown, over, grown on me over the years, especially now that Edge is using Chromium. The previous version of Edge that didn't use Chromium, I considered pretty terrible. But now that it's using Chromium, it's actually not bad, and I've actually started to use it as my default browser. That's... Uh, basically overtaken me from using um, Google Chrome these days. So let's go ahead and start Edge. And we will go ahead and uncheck this. Start without your data. Continue without this data. Uncheck the experience. Confirm. I'm going to uncheck I want to join Microsoft Rewards. Skip that. Let's keep that as dark. And you can change it to whatever color you want here. There's also more options that you can choose from. We'll hit next. 
not going to select any of that nonsense. We're going to hit finish. The other thing I do is I'll go up to the gear icon at the top right here. And I'm going to do layout and set it to focused so that I'm not seeing all the clickbait nonsense. The other thing is they recently added this um, sidebar here. And I'm just going to click hide sidebar. And then I'm going to go up to the little dots here for the settings. We'll click this. Go to settings. And then we are going to go to system and performance. Startup boost. Turn this off. Continue running background extensions and apps when Microsoft is closed. Turn that off also. These are all things that are really just not needed. Startup boost just makes it so that essentially Edge is actually um, loaded behind the scenes even when you're not using it. So it's just a resource hog and just not needed. So anyhow, that's everything for Edge. So we'll go ahead and close out of that. So now that everything is in pretty good shape here, the big thing that a lot of people ask me is, well, how can I go ahead and keep the computer healthy or the operating system, I mean, healthy and and happy? A lot of people, unfortunately, go out and start Googling PC tuners and stuff like that. And those things really are just snake oil or malicious. And so uh, I'm just going to go ahead and show you features that are built into Windows. Um, so previously I had shown you in Task Manager, there's the um, startup uh, applications. So that's a good spot to, you know, to go to and just double check once you have more applications installed, um, you know, to, to tweak in here um, which ones are actually needed to start or whereas you could also just manually, you know, load the application or whatever. So this is a good spot to check on occasion. The other thing is uh, disk cleanup, which I'll go ahead and do a search for. And what I actually recommend you do is uh, click on open file location, and then we're gonna right click it. And then we are going to go ahead and create a shortcut, which I'm just gonna go down to show more options and create shortcut. And it's gonna say it can't be placed here. It needs to go on the desktop, that's fine. And so disk cleanup, the key thing that you want to do when you run it is right click on it and click run as administrator. If you don't do this, it doesn't find all the bloat that can be um, cleaned off. So let's do run as administrator. Wait for it to scan the computer. And then what I do is I uncheck, or I'm sorry, I check every single box here. As you see, it's already growing for the amount of stuff that can be purged. So on a clean install, Windows 11, mind you, we've got the Windows updates and the drivers that we loaded on, but there's already 1.42 gigabytes of data that's just not needed. So we'll click OK here. And actually, before I do that, so every, every year now, Microsoft is releasing a build upgrade for Windows 11. And so the build that I'm showing you is 22H2, which stands for the year 2022. H2 stands for second release. It's technically part of an older naming convention when there used to be two releases of updates that used to happen with Windows 10. So anyhow, it's only one release a year now or one major release a year on top of small feature updates that they may bundle into Windows updates that come out during their monthly patches. The monthly patches themselves usually come out every second Tuesday of every month. Funny how as far as the build stuff goes, every time there is a build upgrade, it's going to leave behind a whole bunch of files from the previous build, which allows you to roll back if something goes wrong. I personally have never had to roll back the OS, and I personally recommend that you just go ahead and purge it. So if this had a previous build of Windows 11 on it, then you would actually see it towards the bottom here, and it will say previous Windows installation or something along those lines. I just check it, 
It can be up to 30 gigs in size, so it's a lot of bloat that can just be hiding out on the machine, um, especially if you have a smaller hard drive, then you know it's, it's crucial to have as much free space as you can. So that's just what I wanted to go over. So we'll hit OK, delete files. One thing to mention also at this spot is if you did check that remove previous installation of Windows, it will pop up again here and say, are you really sure you want to do this? And just hit yes or OK for that. And it will purge it gone forever. All right. So the only other thing that I'm going to go over is just antivirus stuff. Now, I personally can't recommend any antiviruses this day and age. Um, but I do recommend, for the most part, as long as you're not going to any dark areas of the internet, or downloading shady things that the built-in antivirus that is part of Windows 11, which is Microsoft Defender, to me is more than enough to keep you covered from all the general nonsense that's out there. So, like I said, I can't recommend anything. If you really want to, you can certainly install something else. And when you do install another antivirus, it automatically disables Microsoft uh, Defender. If you uninstall your antivirus, Defender will actually kick on automatically. So just something to throw out there. So anyhow, at this point, everything is in really good shape. I recommend doing my little tips and tricks that I showed you in this video here. Um, but of course, everything is completely optional. It's all up to you to personalize your computer the way you want it. So if you found this uh, this video to be useful, please like it. And if you like the content that I'm producing, then please subscribe to my channel. Until next time, see ya.